Hey, what's going on, guys? Back again. All right, just got back from court. Uh, today is June 12th. Um, this is a follow-up to my court uh, regarding the uh, Salt Lake City case. Um, so I went today to my bench trial, and uh, I also have a full recording, a full audio recording that will play after this. Uh, basically, I'll let you find out what the verdict is going to be uh, by listening to it. Um, it was a pretty challenging, you know, um, I, I'm slowly finding to learn a lot more uh, through trial and error and through going through those, those trials, you know, uh, learning. So um, I'm finding out more and more that uh, the court uh, play by their own rules. and. Uh, you know, they don't like when you bring all the rules to their games. They very much have their rules pretty much set uh, the way they want it to be, and that's pretty much it. So on that, I will let you guys go ahead and listen to the uh, audio recording of this court. It's a little long, longer today for my, uh, uh, for my bench trial. And oh yeah, also one thing too is that I did have the option between bench trial or jury trial. But after uh, researching the information on, uh, on online, I found out that bench trial, um, you can argue law, law with the judge, where, uh, you know, in a jury trial, where people come up and, you know, you have a jury trial, you can only argue, like, the case, you know, you can argue, you know, regarding the case, basically. So that's kind of why I choose to go to a bench trial instead of a jury trial. So any, anybody, any comments, any suggestion, um, let me know. I will post another video. Go ahead now and listen to the audio. Thanks for watching and thanks for listening. Patience and firm and hear the case. Sure. Yeah. I mean, so I don't see any pleadings filed in this court. Yeah, I haven't entered any plea. I'm sorry. I haven't. I haven't entered any plea. So. I haven't, I haven't answered any plea in this, uh, in this case. I understand that that's, that's your belief, uh, but having come before the court and saying that you don't wish to plead guilty, you don't believe the court properly has jurisdiction, the court denied your point of view, if you will, or your motion for a finding that jurisdiction is not proper here, and instead set the case for trial. So if there's something further that you'd like to offer, I will hear it. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and proceed to trial. Okay, well, before we start, could I, can I ask uh, a couple questions, if it's possible? What would you like to ask? Uh, first question I wanted to ask. Let me see. When, uh, when am I able to ask for the uh, judge oath of office and the uh, registration? I'm not sure I know what you're asking for. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm asking if we can put your oath of office and your registration on the record. I don't have a record, so no. On the record of this case, that's what this I mean. This is a court not of record. I don't have a record. I can't. Oh, there's no record. Okay. This is, this is a court not of record. Okay. This is considered a justice court, so. All right. In fact, the next month we will record the proceedings that occur here, but right now we don't actually record those proceedings. Okay. It's considered to be a court not of record, so I can't put anything on the Apparently. Okay, record. Right. okay. So how would I be able to uh, check on your ability to actually perform as a judge? I mean, is there any document that you can show me that you can produce? I imagine you to go to the city recorder's office and ask for a copy of the oath of office that I took when I became a judge, and then I think the court, I think I'd had to, to take an oath every four years when the court recertifies. Okay, but you don't have it here today? I don't keep a copy of it. Does the clerk has one? I'm sorry? Does, your, does the court has one here? Does, does, is there one here? You could probably make a grandma request with the court and ask for such a thing. Okay. Uh, I think it, you could make a grandma request, and then if it didn't, if that document was not kept in the court by 
the chief court administrator. It's possible that he would forward that request to the city recorder. And certainly the city recorder keeps it. The AOC, Administrative Office of the Courts, keeps a copy of it. Okay. So, I, you know, if, if possible, I'd like to have the document before we can actually proceed so I can make sure that, you know, you're fully, you know, able to administer this case. Okay. I understand your motion and I'll deny it. I, I've been a sitting judge for 10 years uh, from July 1. Okay. And I, I know of no reason why I don't have the authority to hear this type of case. I, I've heard so many hundreds of cases of okay. this type that I, I'd be quite surprised if jurisdiction was not proper here. So I deny your motion. I, I think it only builds delay and I, I don't see any hmm. justification to grant such a motion. Okay, what, what about the, the uh, delegation of uh, authority order that I actually ask on my uh, affidavit? I think I entered an affidavit. Is that the delegation of authority? Yeah, on, it's on the affidavit uh, that I've entered. Uh, and that's what Judge Robson previously denied. Are you, are you able whatever, to? Whatever you previously offered as your, your affidavit that you. Okay, I I'm not sure what your affidavit is. Intended to communicate. What do you think? Mean? Just that you reserve your rights. I'm not really entirely sure what you're intending to communicate to the court, but that was ruled on by Judge Robinson, and again, I don't find any basis to continue or delay the case. No, I'm I'm not actually delaying it. I mean, uh, it is you know the uh, Constitution states that. I should, you know, before I actually engage, you know, into anybody, you know, uh, in a court, I should make sure that you know, jurisdiction is actually correct and everybody have their oath of office, you know, and such. And that's what I'm actually asking for. So I'm just. As I said, I was in the group of the judges elected mm -hmm. by, not elected, but appointed by the mayor to sit as the judges in this court when this court opened in 2002, and I've been a judge since that time continuously okay. without removal. I've been retained by the voters. I know of no reason why I don't have jurisdiction. I know of no reason why this court does not have jurisdiction. You'll mm -hmm. have already heard a speeding ticket previously. The first case call involved a suspended license charge with the two charges that you have. I know of no reason why this court does not properly have jurisdiction. Okay, well, I, I can take your word for it, or I can actually see something that showed that. I don't know what you'd like to see. For example, mm -hmm. if you've done some research ahead of time, you, yeah, okay. so if you look at the website for the state court systems, mm -hmm. you would see that Salt Lake City has a justice court and has for 10 years. And okay. that's this one. I don't know what I, what I would show you, so I think we just need to proceed. Do you have something else you, that you need to offer at the outset? Well, I'd like to start here, but obviously I can't have any of those documents, you know. The name up here on the sh on the board is my name. Okay. It's been here for ten years. I've been assigned this courtroom. Okay. Some of the officers here have been appearing in front of me for the last ten years. Right. Mr. Swift's not quite old enough to be here. I know of no reason why I can't hear this case. Uh, I, I can can we uh, deal with a uh, matter of common law here or? No. No. It's a statutory court created by statute, passed by the legislature, okay. and the, the system of justice courts has been upheld by the Utah Supreme Court okay. in this state specifically, mm -hmm. and also by the United States Supreme Court repeatedly, over and over and over again when individuals challenge whether or not justice courts could, should exist, the highest court of the land continuously and consistently say that such courts are constitutional and provide uh, a resource of great value. So I know of no reason why this can't, case can't proceed. Okay, well, uh, she would like to proceed, but I'm pretty sure. Okay, well, I'll give my side of the story and stuff, but like I said, those are mainly for common law since it doesn't what? involve, th those are issue of common law because you actually involve a, a human being, it doesn't involve any like corporation. So okay. I, I'm going to be denying all of that being offered because you need to understand, as I said, this is a statutory court created under the authority of the statutes of the legislature of Utah. Okay. So we're not going to hear anything based on common law. He is not allowed to charge you with a common law crime. You don't get to raise a common law defense. We're going to play this game by mm -hmm. the rules set forth by the parties in power. And those parties in power are the legislature of the body of Utah, 
that works on the rules of the state statutes, you are charged under those rules, and that's where the law comes from. So if there are also sometimes city ordinances that are charged, and it appears that in your case you were charged with state code statutes. So we will hear state code charges. You may raise state code defenses. But no common law claim, no common law defense will be heard in this court. This is a statutory court. Can I ask, if I may ask, how, how, does, how does somebody get charged with a statutory crime? What, I mean, are they specific? Well, the city is way? here with an affidavit basically in the form of a citation mm -hmm. with the witness appearing to be sitting next to the prosecutor okay. who's, I believe, going to um, presume give testimony of facts in support of a violation of state law. Is the uh, plaintiff here today? The who? The plaintiff. Is he here today? The plaintiff? Yes. Would I be able to uh, cross the party uh, examine? The that is the plaintiff yes. in a criminal case is the government. Mr. Swift represents the city prosecutor's office. Okay. The city prosecutor's office represents the people of Salt Lake City. Okay. The city prosecutor's office is the plaintiff. So the plaintiff is not here today? The plaintiff is a party, not a person. So how, how is it possible that I go to court against somebody that doesn't actually exist? Oh, I think Salt Lake City exists. They've been paying my salary for quite a time. Salt Lake City exists. And I pay taxes. Would I be able to meet Salt Lake City? I mean, it's not like funny or anything. Well, there's me, there's them, there's her, there's that guy. I... So you guys are the plaintiff? Every resident of Salt Lake City <clears throat> is a part of the party of Salt Lake City. Anyone who So I'm the plaintiff too, then? Do you live in Salt Lake City? Uh, I leave. Here. Ooh, that was a vague answer. Well, in any event, the party, mm -hmm. the people of Salt Lake City. Okay. If you've been reading case law, looking in the. I did actually, yes. Uh, you'll probably notice that in some states, instead of saying state of Utah, you'll say, you'll see the people of the state of New York. The, the reason for that is the difference between I'm suing you because you irritated me beyond belief. And the way that you say operated your vehicle near mine, I sue you civilly for damages because you insulted my sensibilities. And I say you committed a civil assault. Mm -hmm. That is me versus you. That's a private plaintiff versus a private defendant. But when the allegation is you violated a rule that applies to every single individual in the community, then the government becomes the plaintiff on behalf of the people. Mr. Swift represents one office. That office represents the people. The people represent the party bringing this claim. And the difference is that there won't be an award of money damages. There can be a deprivation of your liberty. Sometimes we impose only a fine. So it is true that in some situations, a party that is a plaintiff is an individual or a corporation, mm -hmm. an entity. It is true that in criminal cases such as this, the party that is the plaintiff is an entity much larger. The, the idea is that you violated a rule of common behavior, and therefore the people bring the case. That's what's happening here. So if my physical appearance here, special appearance here today, prove that I am a human being of flesh or blood, um, how can it be in a claim which involve a corporation, I still don't get it. I mean, obviously people can see me here. I'm leaving. I don't. I, I'm here representing Salt Lake City. You represent who? Salt Lake City. Okay. I, Salt Lake City is where? I mean. Salt Lake City is a city. Right. A person. I represent Salt Lake City in this case against you. It's not like a civil suit where you get to, you know, you, you do get the right to uh, confront your accuser. That would be the trooper here. So he's the accuser? You will have that right. So he's the one that brought, he brings the charges? He's the one who issued the citation. I chose to bring the charge to the criminal court. So you are the one that brings the claims, claims against me? You are the plaintiff? Yes, I brought the claims against you. So you are, you are the plaintiff? My office, yes. Well, I need somebody that I can, somebody that is actually plaintiff, like somebody like me, you. You will get to question the officer. So he is the actual plaintiff? He is not the plaintiff, he is the witness. Yeah. 
So who is the actual planning? I, I'm trying to see if there is somebody. I, I'm not going to do this over and over again. I mean, I, I need you to fully need understand this. No, you need to understand, these are all individuals who also have the right to be heard. Time okay. is running. We're not going to keep going over this over and over again. So I've tried to give you the civics lesson. Mr. Swift has tried to do so. In a civil case, an individual sues an individual for civil damages. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's specific enforcement of a rule of law. So this is not a civil case. When I'm talking, do not talk, OK? I'm sorry. Now, if instead a criminal case is going forward, a criminal case is brought forward by the body politic, okay. is the entire community of Salt Lake City, represented by this agency, and this one witness will be the witness who testifies in this case. Okay, so let me ask, so, the, so this is a criminal charges, right, under statutory law, is that what it is? Yes. So would you be different for a criminal charges under common law? Common law does not apply in Utah. We do not have common law crimes, we do not have common law defenses. If that's the basis on which you prepare, just close that folder up and set it aside. Oh, no, no, it's not. I'm because common law does not exist in order, there are no common law crimes. If you go through the Utah Code book, you'll find a section that says common law crimes are abolished. If they are, if you're not being charged with common law crimes, and you may not raise common law defenses. What's going to happen in this case is that Mr. Swift will call his witness. He will, in the form of questions intended to elicit answers, seek to bring forth evidence that would meet the elements of these two statutes you are alleged to have violated. So you're alleged to have violated two statutes. I ask that my clerk produce a copy of the formal information in case we don't already have it to make sure that you know what you're alleged to have done. So the formal information that my bailiff is giving you okay. is the document that has the elements of the offenses that you were alleged to have committed. The first of those charges is speeding, and that generally uh, indicates that you operated your vehicle in excess of the posted limit. And in this situation, it alleges that on January 4th, 2012, at 800 East I-80, you operated your vehicle 79 miles an hour in a 65 mile an hour zone. The second charge, driving on a suspended or revoked operator's license, alleges that you operated your vehicle upon the highways of the state while the defendant's driving privilege was denied, suspended, disqualified, or revoked, a Class C misdemeanor. These two charges are both alleged to have occurred at the same time and place. They're both violations of Utah Code. The Utah Code annotated is the sum total or collection of violations that can be committed. So everything that's been prohibited by law, by the legislature, these are the two violations that you are alleged to have committed on that date and time. Do you understand the charges? I do not. What don't you understand? All of it. That you were alleged to go to operate your vehicle 70 miles per hour in a place close to 65? Yes. Do you have a problem with the mask? No, I don't. Actually, Which I'm pretty good at that. What's your problem? Well, I, I just don't uh, review the charges. I, I don't actually understand them. Uh, first, I would like to start saying that, uh, I mean, I don't, well, I don't, I don't know. It was, is, are they claiming that I was driving a vehicle? Yes. Okay. Uh, I have to also actually uh, deny that. I, w I was not driving a vehicle. I was traveling in my automobile, which is a, uh, completely, uh, completely okay, so different. This is not the time for you to testify. Yes. I need to know that you understand the charges, that it's clearly before you what's alleged to have occurred, and that you have before you a copy of the elements. Mm -hmm. I, that's all we're talking about right now. This trial needs to proceed. So you're charged with two offenses. One is speeding, the other is driving on suspension. What's going to happen is that Mr. Swift will call his witness. Mm -hmm. His witness, I believe, will take the oath, take the witness stand, and then give testimony in response to questions that are posed to him. I will allow you to cross-examine the witness. I will limit your cross-examination to questions only. You don't get to engage in a dialogue with the witness. You don't get to ask the witness questions about the source of law, the UCC, the sui generis person. Nothing of that nature will come in. What you may do is ask questions that explore what this witness has testified to in response to Mr. Swift's questions. 
Mr. Smith can cross it can again redirect his witness. You may recross on the testimony given in redirect. When he's done presenting evidence, we turn the time over to you. If you choose to present a case, you may do so. When you do so, you are waiving your privilege of self-incrimination uh, not being required of you, which is a constitutional right. If you choose to testify yourself, if you don't choose to testify, you don't have to. You may call any other witness who has knowledge of the facts or events, or if you had other kinds of evidence that you wanted to offer that are factually relevant to this case, such as what photographs, it? diagrams, or something of that nature. What about case law? I'm sorry? What about case law? Uh, you may argue case law in your closing argument, but that would not be evidence that would be offered during your case. So if you choose to present a case, you may do so. Presenting in a case is putting on facts that show whether or not the city's evidence meets the burden of proof. If you don't put on a case, they don't get to do rebuttal, but if you testify and you get put forth a factual argument or photographs, diagrams, whatever type of evidence you offer, he has the right to call witnesses or put on evidence in rebuttal, and then I will hear a brief closing argument from each of the parties and then decide the case. One question. Would my affidavit be entered as uh, evidence as well? No. But why not? It doesn't seem to have anything to do with what happened on the date. He has everything to well, do with, with if, the law, with you have, if you have a different argument. affidavit that I'm not aware of, the affidavit that's already in my file has already been ruled on, and it doesn't seem to say a that's thing true. about what happened on January 4th at I-80 and uh, I, I guess the reference I'm, post that is indicated to give the uh, 1800 East as the address. So that's what I'm looking at. Right now, we begin with facts. And your affidavit um, seems to be kind of grasping it. And there's a principle of law out here in the UCC, and I say it applies. And there's this thing out here, and I say it applies. I can't just say that that affidavit makes sense or has anything to do with this case just because you say it does. It has to have a factual nexus. I don't find one. We go for it. OK? Um, actually, it does. There's, I'm trying to explain the reason yeah, that'd why. Be, that'd be a legal argument you can make in closing. Oh, if frozen, you okay, that, that's right. That oh. Sorry, I'm, I haven't done these before, so I'm not really right. familiar you with You may make a legal argument in closing if facts support that legal argument. Yes. I will hear yes. it. All right, Mr. Swift, call your witness. City calls Trooper Fred Vincent. Trooper, if you'll step up to my clerk to be sworn in. You solemnly affirm the testimony you're about to give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury. Take the witness stand. Your bird, you can state your name and spell your last name. Uh, Fred Vincent, last name B I N C E N T. Where do you work? At the Utah Highway Patrol here in Salt Lake County. How long have you worked there? Uh, nine and a half years. And in what capacity do you work for Utah Highway Patrol? Um, I work on the road, so the freeway, um, well, basically all the new traffic in Salt Lake County. Okay, so um, does that include speeding enforcement? It does. Okay. Uh, were you on duty on January 4th, 2012? I was. Where were you working that day? Um, that day I was assigned up on I-80 on the east side. Um, I was up by seven, the 17th East structure working speed. Okay. Did you have an opportunity to come in contact with the defendant that day? I did. And do you recognize the person you came in contact with in the courtroom today? I did. Could you identify him for the court? Yeah, sitting at the table with the black pants, white shirt, black pants. Thank you. May the court uh, reflect you identify the defendant? Yes. And where exactly did you come in contact with the defendant on that day? Yeah, I was running speed on I-80 westbound. I sit just west of the 17th East structure. Um, I'm sitting on the left side. I can see back up towards 2030s, so I can see cars coming down that hill, get a great view of them. Um, I saw it was a 10 Cadillac. Uh, I look at my notes. Well, yeah, before we get there, oh. where you did um, come into contact or where you did see the defendant speeding, was that in Salt Lake City, Utah? It was. Okay. So now, what is the first thing, um, who's pretty nice, what was the first thing you noticed about the defendant or the um. defendant's vehicle? Like I said, I was parked on the left side. What I do is I just open up my driver's door and I lean out and I get the cars coming up behind me and I pull on the track and make the stop. Um, at that time, I noticed there was a 10 Cadillac Escalade using the fast lane come down the hill through the vehicle passing 
easily passing other cars, um, obviously speeding. Um, he's using a LIDAR at a time. Um, put it on the front of the vehicle. It showed 79 miles an hour. Um, I tracked the vehicle with the LIDAR for uh, approximately about three, about 300 feet, so a couple seconds, just to establish the tracking history with the LIDAR. Locked the speed of 79. Um, that was at, he's 437 feet away from me at that time. He passed me, I pulled down the traffic and made the traffic stop and he stopped, i.e. westbound about 800 east. Okay, uh, so just to clarify what you said there, you got the defendant on LIDAR at 79 miles per hour. Yes. What is the speed limit in that zone? 65. Is that clearly marked? It is. With what? How's it marked? Um, Basically, by about every on ramp, there's a 65 mile an hour sign, the okay. light sign, the rectangle. Regular sign. speed limit sign. Yeah. Okay. And so you pulled over the defendant? Yes. Was he the driver? He was. Okay. And uh, did he say anything about the speeding to you? No. Um, I despise him when I stopped him for speed and asked him for his um, driver's license and registration. And was he able to give you his driver's license? He was not. He gave me an ID card with his name and date of birth on it, a, a picture, and then he gave me the vehicle had a temp tag, so I got the temporary registration. Okay. Were you able to look him up with the ID card he gave you? Yes. I went back to my patrol car. I was able to look up, uh, type in his name, date of birth. I was able to look up his Utah driver's license. Um, it also shows a photo of him, which was him. Okay, what did you learn about the status of his Utah driver's license when you uh, looked it up? The driver's license had been suspended for failure to appear. Okay. And... Can I have one step, mm -hmm. Yeah, no further questions right now. Thank you. Do you have any questions for this witness? Uh, you can stand up here at the podium and ask a question. No, I don't actually. Okay. I don't have any questions for him at all. Thank you. The case is submitted to you for grace. Would you like to call any witness or testify yourself? Um. No. Would you like to make closing argument, Mr. Smith? No. I'll submit to the court. Would you like to make closing argument? Is it? I can talk about this now? Or? Yes. Yeah, okay. But remember that having not put oh, no, no, facts, all you get to do is make a legal argument. And then sure. So I noticed he mentioned that I was the driver. Uh, uh, facts. Yeah, uh, getting okay. to it. And uh, according to the definition, uh, a driver is one employing conducting a coach, carriage, wagon, or other vehicle with horses, mule, or animal, or a bicycle, tricycle, or motor car. Uh, Black's Law Dictionary. Um, The um, what I what I claim that I was doing that day is I claim that I was traveling, and I was not actually uh, driving because there is actually two completely different uh, understanding be between driving a vehicle and driving uh, traveling. Uh, according to Black's Law, to travel is to go from one place to another at a distance. To journey spoken of voluntary change of place. Uh, the use of the highway for the purpose of travel and transportation is not a mere privilege, but a common fundamental right of which the public and individual cannot be rightfully deprived. Chicago Motor Coach versus Chicago, 169 NE 221. The right to travel is a part of the liberty of which the citizen cannot be deprived without due process of law under the Fifth Amendment. Ken versus Dole, 357 U.S. 116, 125. The right to travel is a well-established common right that does not own its existence, to the federal government, it is recognized by the court as a natural right. Uh, Chapman versus Dulles, 96 a APP, DC 287 to 25, F2D 938 at 941. The state cannot diminish right of the people, Hurtado versus California, 110 US 516. Where rights secured by the Constitution are involved, there cannot be rulemaking or legislation which will abrog abrogate them. 
Miranda v. Arizona, 384 U.S., 436, 491. The claim and exercise of a constitutional right cannot be converted into a crime. Milo v. U.S., 230F, 486, at 489. And also, I would like to state that I'm, I'm here in a traffic uh, court, I'm assuming, which, according to the definition, traffic, it means commerce, trade, sales, or exchange of merchandise, bill, money, and the like, uh, Black's Dictionary. So uh, I'm assuming this court is conducting uh, commerce. Uh, that's the reason why I've entered my reservation of right not to uh, having to perform in any of those uh, uh, proceedings or whatever else uh, we guys wish we would like to actually get uh, involved with. Uh, I've reserved my right to continue to travel on the road. Uh, I, like I say, if uh, if there is any evidence that I was driving, as it states here, by uh, definition, that I was employed in conducting, and if somebody spoke to my employer, uh, I'd like to see, uh, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to have those uh, prove as well. So that's, that's this is my uh, defense. I, like I stated, I was not driving, uh, and I was simply traveling. I find you guilty of the two offenses. I don't find that any of the case law that you cited is relevant to whether or not uh, you did not violate statutes that have both been, I think, upheld under Utah law, which is the applicable court. You should know, should you try to argue these types of defenses in the future, what's binding on me is the law that's passed by the state legislature or the city ordinance that's alleged to have been violated and the ordinance created by the, no, do not interrupt the judge ruling, uh, created by the city council. But when other cases come from other courts, they are only persuasive authority. And I find that the types of topics that the cases you cited are so attenuated from what's at issue here uh, that not only are they not persuasive authority, they're simply not relevant. Now, you know, you, you, you look for cases that you think put forth an idea that might help you, but uh, I think it's been clearly upheld. I think if you pick and choose cases, it seems you've done, I think you have ignored cases that have said that it's absolutely legitimate for the government to control who may operate a vehicle. So the right to travel may not be abrogated, but certainly the right to operate a vehicle on the roads and the highway may be. And each state does so in ways that are relatively consistent, although some differences exist from state to state. But I find that the elements of each offense have been met, because that's all that I'm doing here today. All my job is to do is to find out whether or not the city meets the burden of proof, putting forth facts that show the elements of each of these two offenses have been violated. I find that there is competent and compelling and, in fact, highly persuasive evidence that you were operating a vehicle that was traveling 79 miles an hour in a 65 mile an hour zone, uh, which puts you at a certain level of speed uh, in, your, in a vehicle. And then also, uh, I find that based on the evidence offered by the city that you're driving privileges were not valid. They were either suspended, revoked, or denied for failure to appear, which is a common outcome if we have a ticket issued in our courts and someone doesn't come in. Failure to appear generally results in the person having a suspension. So either it's with an FTA perhaps out of this court or perhaps out of a different court, but either way, an FTA usually results in a suspension. So I find the guilty of two offenses. Would you like to be sentenced today? Would you like to be sentenced at a later time? You do have a right of appeal. If you wish to appeal, you may certainly exercise that right. But you do need to remember that that right exists only for 30 days. It is time limited. The 30 days begin after the entry of sentence. Would you like to be sentenced in today, or would you like to come back another time? Well, if I'm going to appeal, would I need to be sentenced today? or? Because, I, like I say, I, I, I didn't think this court would be able to actually uh, discuss those, you know, Not my, sure really why that my would thought, argument. But you might have noticed it's, that this is kind of a general sort of yeah, it's pretty, course of business yeah. for this court, but you know, in any event, did you want to be sentenced today or another time? Uh, 
You can't appeal okay. until sentence is entered. So oh, okay. if you want to appeal, you might as well get sentenced today. You want to wait 30 days? I'll give you the date from that. Well, I, you know, I, like I say, I really can't make any choices right now. No, you can. I, do you want to be sentenced today or do you want to be sentenced at another time? Would, if I, is it like a plea that I'm actually entering? Because I, I don't want to enter any plea with No, court. Utah law says a defendant will be sentenced two to 45 days from the date of conviction. Okay. That was a rule that was created, really somebody ought to go back and amend it, but it was a rule that was created when things didn't move at the speed and at the pace that they do now. And most people choose to have sentencing on the same day. Now sometimes a person is so upset or so distraught that they prefer to come back another day. But it depends on how much time you've got available. You've got a lot of time on your hands, you want to sit in court two or three hours here and there, come back another day. Spend another few hours waiting for your case to be called. Or if you'd rather move things along, have sentencing today, then you can file your appeal. Well, that won't change anything about you already made your decision, right? So. Yes, I have. I told oh, you already made the decision. Okay, guilty. so I guess it doesn't matter. So are you saying you want to be sentenced today? I mean, it's really up to you. Like I said, I don't, I, I haven't consented to these court procedures since, since, since the actual beginning. So, I mean, you guys are just proceeding right. without me. And so. I rule that your consent is not relevant. You don't I, have to consent to a court procedure. Under procedures. statutes, don't require consent? No. They do not? No. You violate the law, city charges it. Okay. And guess what? Crimes before me. That's kind of where we are. So, would you like sentencing today? I, see, I can't really say. I, I, you know. No, you will say. You're going to say yes or no, or I'll hold you in contempt. You're going to be sentenced today or sentenced at a later day, but you're making all these other people wait, and I don't know why that's fair. So you but want to be sentenced today, or do you want can, to be sentenced at a later time? We can do it. Time? We can do it today. If I'm being coerced right. into it. So you recommend the $165 standard bill account one and $300 standard bill account two. What would you like to say, sir, before we go forward? Anything else? Uh, yes. Just very really simply say that uh, every time I get. In the wheel of my car, it doesn't mean that I'm driving every single time. I mean, you can, you know, you can have a license. It doesn't mean that you use it all the time. That's all. That's pretty much all I have to say. Fabrice, if you're going down I-80, same road I'm going on, Schuster's going on, Bale of Bell's going on, any one of us, if you're going down the same road I'm going down. Then I think you're the same laws I'm subject to. And my guess is if your car were on fire, you'd probably expect Salt Lake County or Salt Lake City to show up and put the fire out. But the problem I have with the individuals who come in here and say, the fringe on your flag makes your court unimportant or illegal, or you don't, or the UCC says you're not a natural person, sui generis files these papers and then nothing matters, is you want the benefits of government without the other things that the rest of us are willing to pay for. I find that kind of distressing. So you think that Salt Lake City Fire is going to show up and put out your burning car, but yet you have the right to drive without a license, even though I'm required to get one? Then it seems to me that you're asking for something that goes far beyond what uh, we require of our citizens. You're asking for the rights of a citizen without the burdens of citizenship. And to me, that's kind of nonsensical. I don't understand it. I don't get why people think if I claim under these words that you should not have jurisdiction over me because I am a free agent, but please show up when I want my house is burning down, educate my children and you know all the other benefits of living in a community, it doesn't always sit well with public officials. So you might want to think about what you run on your on your arguments that you put before the district court judge on your appeal. You might want to consider that. Because that's kind of the issue that Actually, I, the I, judges have and the judges discuss when they're yeah. training about this kind of case because we sort of find it problematic that a person is willing to, you know, are you going to say that you get to drive down Interstate 80 but you don't have to pay any of the taxes that support keeping Interstate 80? I don't think that's particularly fair. Like, I guess so what I was really... Are, I just, I'm giving you an idea so that you can... Maybe mull that over in your mind before you take your I, appeal. I haven't hurt anybody. I haven't injured anybody. I just don't know why I'm here. If it's just for money, I, I don't know. I haven't hurt anybody. There's no injured party. There's no damaged party here. So that, that's the only thing I'm actually arguing. I mean, I, I, 
I, I shouldn't be here until I, you know, I've actually hurt somebody. I, I understand what you mean with all the benefits that the government gives me, but I don't use them. Okay. Well, you believe that you've not injured anybody. The city instead charged you with driving on a revoked license and speeding, and I'm asked now that I impose a fine, and I'm going to do so. Go ahead. On the speeding charge, I impose two hundred and sixty-five dollars. I have to spend one hundred. I expect for you to pay one sixty-five, which is the standard bail for speeding uh, at. I think it's 19 miles an hour, excuse me, 14 miles an hour over the appropriate uh, post of limit. Now that includes the four Dallas state security surcharge that I'm required by law to impose. Revoked license is a charge that's exempt from the surcharge. The standard bail is 300. What I impose is $600. I suspend half. My intention is for you to pay the standard bail, again, 300. So to clear this case with this court would require the payment of $465. Um, because the charges were both reduced to infractions at the last hearing, now the information that was filed actually says Class C does to me, but it is clear from the record that the court did reduce the charges on the motion of the city at the last hearing. So they're both being infractions, and the court cannot impose jail time. I can't incarcerate you, although I could hold you in contempt and incarcerate you, but all I can do, because they are both infractions, uh, is fine you. So I now fine you the standard bail. You either pay that bail, or you can expect that a failure to comply will issue, which will also suspend a person's driving privilege. So uh, order a six-month period of probation. During that time, have no new violations of the law. The fines and fees are due within 30 days. Or if you choose to appeal, uh, you. Your notice of appeal, if you choose to appeal, is due within 30 days. Anything mm -hmm. beyond that time, it would not be accepted. So you can either appeal if you choose to do so, go to the district court, or you can pay the fine. If you tell me that you're going to stay on probation here and pay the fine, you could ask me for uh, a fine period that extended beyond 30 days, and I'd certainly consider your request for a payment schedule. Based on your comments, I expect that you were going to appeal, and so I just gave you the same time limit that you would for your appeal. Do you okay. have any questions? No, I don't. See my third period paperwork, please. Okay. Do I have to take a paper? Yes. I, I don't need it. If you want to know the case number so that you can make your appeal, I would just have to. I don't have to sign anything, right? I'm sorry? I, I don't have to sign anything, correct? When, uh, when am I able to ask for the uh, judge oath of office and the uh, registration? I'm not sure I know what you're asking for. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm asking if we can put your oath of office and your registration on the record. I don't have a record, so no. On the record of this case, that's what this I mean. This is a court not of record. I don't have a record. I can't. Oh, there's no record. Okay. This is, this is a court not of record. Okay. This is considered a justice court. so. All right. In fact, the next month we will record the proceedings that occur here, but right now we don't actually record those proceedings. Okay. It's considered to be a court not of record, so I can't put anything on the Apparently. Okay, on record. Okay. So how would I be able to uh, check on your ability to actually perform as a judge? I mean, is there any document that you can show me? that you can produce I to me? I imagine you need to go to the city recorder's office and ask for a copy of the oath of office that I took. Uh, the way they want it to be, and that's pretty much it. So on that, I will let you guys go ahead and listen to the uh, audio recording of this court. It's a little long, longer today for my, uh, uh, for my bench trial. And oh yeah, also one thing too is that I did have the option between bench trial or jury trial. But after uh, researching the information on, uh, on online, I found out that bench trial, um, you can argue law, law with the judge, where, uh, you know, in a jury trial, where people comes up and, you know, you have a jury trial, you can only argue, like, the case, you know, you can argue, you know, regarding the case, basically. So that's kind of why I choose to go to a bench trial instead of a jury trial. So any, anybody, any comments, any suggestion? Um, 
let me know. I will post another video. Go ahead now and listen to the audio. Thanks for watching and thanks for listening. Case. Sure, yeah. I mean, so, uh, I, when I became a judge, and then I think the court, I think I'd had to, to take an oath every four years when the court recertifies. Okay, but you don't have it here today? I don't keep a copy of it. No, does the clerk has one? I'm sorry? Does, your, does the court has one here? Does, does, is there one here? You could probably make a grandma request with the court and ask for such a thing. Okay. Uh, I think it, you could make a grandma request, and then if it didn't, if that document was not kept in the court by the chief court administrator, it's possible that he would forward that request to the city recorder. And certainly the city recorder keeps it. The AOC, Administrative Office of the Courts, keeps a copy of it. Okay. So, I, you know, if, if possible, I'd like to have the document before we can actually proceed so I can make sure that, you know, you're fully, you know, able to administer this case. Okay. I understand your motion and I'll deny it. I've, I've been a sitting judge for 10 years, uh, come July 1. Okay. And I, I know of no reason why. I don't see any pleadings filed in this court. Yeah, I haven't entered any plea. I'm sorry? I haven't, I, I haven't entered any plea, so I haven't, I haven't entered any plea in this, uh, in this case. I understand that that's, that's your belief. Uh, but having come before the court and saying that you don't wish to plead guilty, you don't believe the court properly has jurisdiction, the court denied your point of view, if you will, or your motion for a finding that jurisdiction is not proper here, and instead set the case for trial. So if there's something further that you'd like to offer, I will hear it. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and proceed to trial. Okay, well, before we start, can I ask uh, a couple of questions, if it's possible? What would you like to ask? Uh, first question I wanted to ask. Let me see. Hey, what's going on, guys? Back again. All right, just got back from court. Uh, today is June 12th. Um, this is a follow-up to my court uh, regarding the uh, Salt Lake City case. Um, so I went today to my bench trial and uh, I also have a full recording, a full audio recording that will play after this. Uh, basically, I'll let you find out what the verdict is going to be uh, by listening to it. Um, it was a pretty challenging, you know. Um, I, I'm slowly finding to learn a lot more uh, through trial and error and through going through those those trials, you know, uh, learning. So um, I'm finding out more and more that uh, the court uh, play by their own rules and, uh, you know, they don't like when you bring all the rules to their games. They're very much of their rules pretty much set.